Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, Episode 14, Thoughts. This episode is called Watch Dogs. Another episode I love. Spoilers throughout this video for everything MCU that has hap had happened before this episode first premiered. And yes, let's dive right. Yeah, so, so one quick thing. Um, nobody entered it into the IMDb trivia. So I'll just say real quick here, um, at one point, yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's the opening scene, you know, they, they watch a little bit of television, a little bit of news, and the, the lower thing, it, you know, brings up this gang war in New York, which is definitely a reference to, to Daredevil. So, yeah, very nicely done. That was because it's the kind of thing like, you know, it doesn't. If you watch this episode and you haven't watched Daredevil, all it actually tells you is that, oh, there's a gang war going on in New York. You might not even think, oh, that must be Daredevil. You know, you're not really missing something. But, yeah, you know, that's. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah, for, for those of us who have watched Daredevil as well as watched the show, yeah, it's, you know, saying, yes, this is still technically one shared cinematic universe. I really like the, the relationship between Mac and Ruben. It feels very, very credible, authentic, and such. And, yeah, you know, the, the, the um, attack is shown on, on the news, and, yeah, you know, Mac is horrified, and Ruben thinks, this is awesome, you know, and, let's see. Yeah, I, I think they did a good job. You know, in an earlier episode, Daisy just mentioned, you know, you sound like the watchdogs. And the watchdogs are these guys who, you know, and yeah, if you hadn't guessed by the episode title, then the, the fact that her mentioning the watchdogs was in the previously on should clue you in this episode is about the watchdogs. But at least they get to that. That's not like you know, giving away that that happens at the end of the episode, it's in the first scene. And, yeah, they, you know, the point is made that, well, you know, it used to just be rhetoric, but now they've taken action, and this is sadly accurate about a lot of terrorist movements, you know, it starts with just people expressing a really hateful opinion, and with enough time, if nothing is done, yeah, eventually they start acting on it, you know. That is one thing, you know, I, I really appreciate... This is, it's... The Watchdogs really are, are very reminiscent of, like, far-right reactionary groups. You know, they... Th th there's one point where... One of them is like it used to be illegal aliens, and now it's outer, and now it's space aliens. You know, which also kind of gets across. Yeah, they'll they'll always find someone else to blame for problems that maybe they didn't cause themselves. It's not always that's not it's not always their problems they cause themselves, but it's usually other white guys. You know, powerful white guys, rich white guys who cause these problems. It's not non-whites, it's not, you know, LGBTQ plus people, it's not women. How So, so yeah, I really appreciate that it's, that the episode is confronting that, and it's, it's one of the biggest problems in America. The, the fact that there are a lot of these people, coupled with the fact that law enforcement is very, like, they they do very very little to to deal with them, which is, you know, that's probably the most fictitious thing in this entire episode. Forget inhuman superpowers, forget the the tech and and all this stuff. The idea that a government agency would actually take action to stop 
right-wing domestic terrorists, that is just completely impossible to believe. Completely strange credulity past the breaking point. However, I wish that they didn't... They basically conflate, you know, far-left rhetoric with far-right terrorism. Because some of the things that are said as, you know, beliefs, the beliefs of the watchdogs, this thing of, you know, the system is rigged against us, and, you know, we have to do something ourselves. Now, obviously, a lot of us on the far left do not believe that the thing that needs to be done is, is violence, but, yeah, you know, the system rigged against... Yeah, that's that sounds much more like left wing rhetoric than than far right rhetoric. So yeah, I I I don't know if that was intentional. Maybe they're like, what? We didn't say right wing. Look, they talk like left wingers. But yeah, it just that was that was frustrating to me. Now the. Yeah, so Lincoln is not going on the mission, which, yeah, you know, the moment that you hear that, yeah, we think, oh, the, you know, the cocoon evaluation did not go well. I bet he didn't even learn Russian. And, yeah, later it is confirmed that it wasn't, yeah, it, it didn't go so well. Nitramine is brought up, which... Yeah, you know, that was that was big in uh, season one of Agent Carter, which aired before, you know, yeah, before this season did, or at least this half of this. Yeah, I think before, before the first half of this season aired, that had aired. So, yeah, very cool to, to see that brought back, and... <laughs> I like Daisy calling them nerd herd and very cool to see Felix Blake again and yeah you know that I can that it again it's very credible you know he he was injured and you know when he came back he you know that that's the kind of thing that can really change how you view things because during his recovery he was not as mobile as he used to be he maybe found out who his friends were you know who visits you in hospital when you need to, you know when when yeah so it's it's sadly very very credible i'm not saying that everybody becomes radicalized by that sort of thing but it does happen and and that's another thing, you know, the I actually based on the first scene, I thought it was gonna turn out that Ruben either already was a watchdog, or that the episode would end with him joining them. But I suppose really the first scene sets up that he might join them if something doesn't happen to Yeah. Um But but yeah, you know, the the yeah, the watchdogs are like this right-wing reactionary group. Right-wing reactionary groups prey on, you know, people who are confused and angry and have lost. You know, we're told Ruben lost his job and he he's having trouble with the mortgage. You know, the the yeah. So the the. Uh, yeah, again, very, very credible. And, yeah, and Gemma blames herself. And May is like, you shouldn't be. Which I quite appreciate. I love the debate whether on... Okay. Uh, the debate on what exactly they should do you know, about the about the watchdogs. You know, Max says this sounds like Gestapo to me. And Daisy is like, we have to 
we have to go far to to do you know and yeah there you know it is it is actually difficult that is something that we have to you know because the the thing he points out is the person you're talking about that you could catch and and question you don't know if he had anything to do with this he might support it but you know and and yeah on some level you know freeze peach does enter into this kind of so so yeah i i really appreciate them and and i like that you know the episode makes it clear that both this, this is one of the few cases where there is a both sides kind of thing going on you know the episode gives you know yeah both both sides are represented by characters that we trust up to this point and they are both given lines that very clearly express their viewpoints you know this is the kind of thing where if you if you do a scene like this if you want to communicate oh see this side has a point this other side they don't know what they're talking about you know you would have one side making very clear concise points expressing them well and you'd have the other side be like uh well uh that's uh mm, you know just not being able to get anything coherent out maybe throw in a, a slur for good measure and yeah, I, I like, you know, Lincoln is like, so you do want me on this, you know, you want me to go with you. Ah, that's a relief. When when you said that I couldn't go on the other mission, it kind of sounded like you weren't happy with my evaluation. And Coulson's like, I wasn't. <laughs> and, yeah, um... Mac become, you know, it becomes clear to Mac, Reuben kind of went down the rabbit hole, and yeah, so May invites Simmons to, to help track down Andrew, and she's like, oh, you're doing this all wrong, <laughs> which is such a Simmons thing to say. But even she, like, saying it to May, I'm not saying it's out of character, I'm saying it's very fun, and, and May sends her the, the, you know, the killing, the, the, the death glare, and, let's see, then we have the, yeah, um, I quite like Daisy questioning Dallas and you know taking out one you know one of his windows at a time to get answers out of him and Fitz pointing a gun let's see and yeah you know Simmons communicates to May she has to think like a doctor so you know she it is true that Melinda May is not a doctor, but Ming-Na Wen used to play one on TV. Or she was definitely on ER. I'm not sure she... I haven't watched... I'm just aware that she was on that show. So, maybe she played one on TV. And, yeah. The... Let's see... Simmons points out, you know, the, the vaccine. You know, if Andrew hasn't fully turned yet. And May is like, don't give me hope. And yeah, Ruben sees Mac shoot, and I like the thing about you know what does he think you do? Insurance? Not anymore, I don't think. And yeah, so Felix Blake gives a great hologram monologue or hollow mono for short. And I like the thing about, you know, I, I knew that that wasn't really him. There was a lag. Usually he interrupts you way more. But yeah, I, I'm never going to turn down tight as well or delivering an impassioned speech. And yeah, so they thought that 
Mac was the Inhuman. You know, so they sent, the, you know, five of them went after him. None of them went after Daisy because they didn't see who attacked. Everyone that saw the attack were taken out by them, but, you know, they saw that Mac was there. They saw that someone was using Inhuman powers. So, yeah. And, you know, Ruben isn't safe from them either. Which, you know, I, I quite appreciate that point made because some people have been attacked by people that they used to trust as part of a, a movement. And he makes another shotgun axe because, yeah, it's, it's epic the first time he did that, so yeah. And... <laughs> yeah, really, really cool scene as he takes them out one by one. And Daisy cannot wait to call Mac Alfie. And... Yes, we end on, you know, Gideon Malik was using the watchdogs. And... Felix Blake got some sort of weapon. You know, there, yeah, there was a weapon in the ATCU facility, which... You know, yeah, they use the attack as a cover-up, so very clever. Daisy does look really good in that black leather jacket. I I still find it kind of silly when when American TV and movies put a character in a black leather jacket. It's like, they're the badass now, but she looks good in it. not going to claim that she, yeah. Uh, yes, so some IMDb trivia for the episode. Daisy mentions having Damage Control come to clean up the Mackenzie's house after the shootout. Damage Control is a construction company appearing in Marvel Comics, which specializes in repairing the property damage caused by conflicts between superheroes and supervillains. And yeah, at this point, they had not yet appeared in an MCU movie. So this is one of the first mentions of them in the MCU at all. Possibly the first mention. So, you know, yeah. They they had an idea that they would be doing something with them. Daisy Johnson offered to Quake the Nitramine off Fitz's neck, which is a reference to her code name from the comics, Quake. And it is a clever, you know, yeah, you gotta have some, you know, nickname, code name for that kind of superpower thing, so, yeah. Daisy and Mac... Uh, Daisy calls Mac and Fitz the Nerd Herd. This is the name of the team in the civilian cover job for Chuck, a regular citizen turned spy in Chuck. Gaius Charles appears on the show for the first time as Mac's brother, Adrian Palicki, starring on the show until this episode. Both of them have starred on Friday Night Lights. And I think that is yes, yeah. So uh, in the memorable quotes section, someone put in the entire um yeah the entire bit about nitromine between. Uh, yeah, Fitz, Daisy, and Mac, and yeah, v very nicely done. To yes, so I uh, yes, next episode I cover tomorrow, and I will close with the exchange between Mac and Fitz. Do we take this debris back with us? Uh, yeah, sure. Have you been working out? Because it weighs like 100,000 tons. That's a building. So, no, then. <laughs>